Now that we have our full range of luminosity masks, it's time to see how we can use them in our workflow to make very specific enhancements within our photos. As we saw in the first video, we can target areas based on brightness to lower highlights or bring out details in darker areas. In this lesson, we're going to take that a step further. We'll look at making even more targeted contrast changes using different masks, including midtones. And in the end, we'll have given our image much more mood and balance. Firstly, looking at the image we have in front of us, the highlights in the sky are quite strong, but we have no underexposed areas, which is great. To begin with, we have to run the luminosity mask actions. Go to your actions dialog and open up the JM luminance mask action. Select generate luminance masks and press play. If the actions don't run smoothly in one go, make sure this box is unchecked. If it isn't, uncheck it and start the actions again. Our first task is to bring down the highlights and add some warm colour to that overexposed region. So we want to target the sky and some of the foreground water. Firstly, let's unlock the background layer. Now we'll go into our channels palette and look through the brights channels. It looks like brights too will be ideal for that selection since much of the overexposed part of the sky is whitish and the highlights in the foreground are light grey, meaning they will only be partially affected by the changes. But the shadows and darker midtones won't be affected because they are darker in the mask. Holding Ctrl or Command on a Mac and left clicking on brights too, we now see our marching ants. Press Ctrl and H or Command and H to hide them. Now, back to our layers panel, we can open up a curves layer and bring down the curve slightly, which lowers the highlights and gives the area more colour. Now we're going to give the whole image more mood by adding extra contrast and colour to the midtones. So the contrast adjustments won't affect the highlights or shadows in an image, just the midtones. Back to the channels palette, I usually use midtones 3 for contrast adjustments. This is because it's often the most balanced mask, selecting a good range of midtones while excluding highlights and shadows. However, at the moment, the highlighted areas and the shadows aren't completely blacked out in this mask, so they will be affected by any adjustments we make. We can refine this further by subtracting more masks as we did in the last video. Select this mask by holding Ctrl or Command on a Mac and left clicking. Now if you go to our darks masks, we need to find a mask that includes all of our shadows. We're subtracting these from our selection so that these areas remain protected from the contrast adjustment. Otherwise, we may end up with underexposed parts in our photos. Docs 4 looks like a good selection. It includes the stack in the background and some of the rocks in the foreground. Let's subtract this mask by holding Ctrl and Alt or Command and Option on a Mac and clicking on the Docs 4 thumbnail. Now let's move up to our brights masks. We don't want to influence any of the brighter part of the sky or foreground, so I think brights too is ideal because these areas are fairly bright in this mask. Let's subtract that just as we did with the darks 4 mask by holding Ctrl and Alt and left clicking on the thumbnail. Now we have our selection. Return to the layers panel and open up the curves layer. Hold Alt or Option on a Mac and left click on the thumbnail of your new curves layer mask. This is the mask we just created, and we can see a lot of midtones will be selected, but the highlights in the sky won't be affected, and nor will the darker parts of the rocks, because these areas are dark in our mask. The histogram in the curves layer confirms this. No shadows or highlights are selected in the adjustment. We can adjust the midtone contrast by creating a typical S curve, or we can create extra contrast by changing the blend mode of this layer. If we change it to overlay, we get a strongly contrasting scene, which is probably a touch too strong. A gentler effect can be found using the soft light blend mode. This one change has added some lovely contrast and mood. And if you feel the change is too strong, you can always adjust the opacity of this layer to suit you. Now we've created more contrast within the midtones, let's add some brightness to them too. The image is a tiny bit dark, but again, we don't want to affect the highlights or shadows with this change. Let's reselect the mask we just created by holding Ctrl and left clicking on the curve layer mask. We now have our selection back. This time, we'll open up a brightness layer. 
We'll just slide the brightness along slightly to increase the general brightness of the image. Now I'm going to group these changes by selecting both layers and by pressing Ctrl and G and name this group Midtones. So this is a before and after comparison. There's much more contrast in colour now. You may find you want to deepen the shadows slightly, in which case we just need to go to a Darks mask like Darks 4, select it and open another Curves layer just as before. We must be careful not to darken those shadows too much. And if we wish, we can mask out some of the changes if we don't want it to affect certain areas. For example, the C stack has darkened too much and the corners of our image have darkened a bit too much too. Now we've produced three targeted contrast adjustments with luminosity masks and completely changed the feel of the image. I'm going to group our previous changes and call this new group Contrast. Now we're going to draw out some detail within our image. In the Actions folder, you'll see the Detail Enhancer action set. If you haven't installed this, double click on the action now, or load it into Photoshop in your Actions dialog like so. So we're ready to use our Detail Enhancer, but it's important to know that any form of Detail Enhancement will create a number of problems in our images. Mainly, it'll exaggerate any noise in your image, and secondly, it can often lead to white edging around objects. We can often avoid both of these problems by placing a luminosity mask onto the Detail Enhancing layer. Let me show you what I mean. We can run our Detail Enhancer by making sure we have the main image selected and then going to our Actions dialog to Detail Enhancer and selecting Start. Then we just press play for this action to run. This can take a few seconds if you're working on larger files. The Detail Enhancer is now finished and has created a new layer called Detail Enhancer. You'll see that the default opacity for this layer is 38%. We don't need a high opacity for this to create a good effect. But for this video, I'm going to use an opacity of about 60% so you can see the changes clearly. We'll look at a before and after so you can see how dramatically these details have been enhanced. This is because we're making local contrast changes, which affects contrast at a much smaller level. But we can see that it has caused a few problems. The C stack now has some untidy edges and the sky has pronounced black edges around the clouds and the water has lost some of its smooth texture. Just as before, we can tailor this layer to suit our needs using luminosity masks. Essentially, we want to target the body of the sea stack and the foreground rocks. Let's look for a suitable mask in the channels palette. Looking at our luminosity masks, Dark 3 will be a great option for us. It contains much of the information we need in the foreground, the sea stack is selected, and most of the sky will be excluded. Let's select this mask by holding Control or Command on a Mac and left clicking on the thumbnail. Now we'll return to the Detail Enhancer layer in the Layers panel. To apply our selection, we just need to go to the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel and press it. Our Luminosity Mask will appear in the Detail Enhancer Mask. Now if we compare before and after, you'll see the changes are much more subtle and only in the areas that interested us. I'm going to increase the opacity of the Detail Enhancer to 100% just for demonstration purposes. You can now see the lovely detail being emphasised in the foreground and the C stack. But we no longer have any of the problems we saw earlier. The C stack is free from untidy edging and most of the sky and water is unaffected. Our luminosity mask has taken control of the detail enhancing effect and left us with a much more pleasing image. We can see what the layer would look like without the luminosity mask applied if we right click on the mask and choose disable mask. The effect is far too strong and leaves the image looking overcooked. We can click on the mask again to enable it. Finally, we're going to look at how to refine our mask even further to make more specific selections. Let's say that after looking at our image, we've decided that the sunrise is lacking brightness. The beauty of a non-destructive workflow is that we can simply go back to our curves layer from earlier and adjust it accordingly. But sometimes we don't have that option. We could look at our brights masks to find a suitable selection, but on this occasion, the masks targeting only the sunrise aren't very strong. We have just a range of greys instead of white in that area. 
We don't want to choose a different bright channel because our adjustments may affect other areas that are included in the mask. Another great advantage when you're working with luminosity masks is that they're adjustable. For example, we can take a mask like Bright 3 and change it so that the sun rises brighter while excluding the rest of the image. To do this, we need to right click on Bright 3 and choose Duplicate Channel. We now see a layer called Bright 3 Copy. Select this and then deselect Bright 3 and this will remove the pink colour from our image. Now go to Image, Adjustments and choose Levels. Adjusting our sliders, we can slowly begin to narrow down the area we want to affect. As you can see, I now have a completely white sunset area and some darker greys in other areas which won't be affected or which I can mask out later. Press OK and select this mask in the usual way, holding CTRL and left clicking on it. With this selection, let's open up a curves layer. The histogram shows us that only the highlights and upper midtones are selected. Now I'll move the curve up to brighten the sunrise. I can now quickly mask out some of the areas affected on the rocks and the sea. You should note that this way of refining masks is very useful in other situations as well. If you're shooting a model with darkish hair against a light background, you can make even the finest selection around small loose hairs in this way. As with all things, every person has their own unique way of using luminosity masks. It's up to you to find yours. To finish, I'm going to make one more adjustment. This isn't actually necessary in this image, but you may find it useful in some of your images. If we wish, we can add more warmth to our sunset using the mask we just created. We can do this by holding CTRL and left clicking on the curves layer mask to reselect our mask and then opening a photo filter. Going to warming filter 81, I'll move the slider all the way along to 100 to show you the effect. We can see that only the area selected now has a warm colour. This is a great way of applying a warm colour cast without taking away natural colours from other parts of the image. Neither of these last two changes were really necessary in this workflow. They were just used for demonstration purposes, so I'm going to delete them and drag our detail enhancer layer into the contrast group. Now here's one final before and after to show you how powerfully luminosity masks have altered this entire image. In the next video, we'll be able to apply the techniques that we've learned now onto a beautiful Milky Way image and we'll be able to refine those techniques further.